Project Guru. 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 Всем привет! Slavi Zak Novak na radio stansi Novorussia Rocks. Welcome to Novorussia Rocks radio station. This is Zak Novak, your American in downtown Donetsk. The program is called Project Guru, and Guru is in the house as always. My engineer, Andre, as well. Let's get right to it. War crimes, genocide, as Ukraine junta fires 113 artillery shells on civilian areas of Donetsk Republic. There is no stopping the madman Poroshenko and his Nazi military machine as again and again the deliberate bombing of civilian areas of our Republic of Donetsk. Coup leader Poroshenko of Ukraine, backed by the Obama regime, have constantly, constantly been bombing civilian areas of both republics, Donetsk and Lugansk, cowardly avoiding the military might of the republics. Poroshenko instead tries to use Nazi Germany tactics of World War II to flush out the nation of its citizens, with constant bombing on a daily basis the proud citizens of the republics have only gotten stronger. No one is leaving. As a matter of fact, more and more have returned from Mother Russia only to make the republics more proud and stronger. Nazi Kiev forces have fired 113 artillery shells at Yasinovate and its outskirts, the western suburb of Donetsk, Dokuchayevsk, and Yelenovka. A law enforcement source in the Donetsk People's Republic said yesterday, the Nazi Ukrainian side shelled the DPR's territory late on Wednesday and in small hours of Thursday from 122 mils and 152 mil caliber weapons, the source said. The Nazi forces also used mortars with the calibers of 82 and 120s, infantry combat vehicles, grenade launchers, small arms, all on civilian areas, on civilians. The villages of Vasilyevka in the Yasinovata district, Signalnia near Dokuchayevsk, Trudovskia in western Donetsk and Zaitsevo near Golovka came under fire as well. Our sister republic Lugansk attacked by the Ukraine junta, Stakhanov city bombed with heavy artillery shells. War crimes, coup leader Poroshenko of Ukraine once again with his fascist military war machine backed by the Obama administration and terrorist organization NATO who have delivered deadly weapons to the Kiev junta that have been used against civilians. Once again, the targeting of civilian areas. A deliberate attempt to try to flush out the citizens of this region, but to no avail, no avail as no one is leaving. The proud people of Lugansk Republic are here to stay. Nazi Ukraine forces shelled Stakhanov, a city some 60 kilometers west of Lugansk, in the small hours of Thursday, damaging buildings and power lines, the Lugansk People's Republic Army said. The shelling was conducted from the Nazi Kiev forces' positions near Popasnaya from artillery weapons with the caliber of 152 mils. A gas pipeline and a power line were damaged and windows were shattered at a private home, the militia said to the Lugansk Information Center. Over the past 24 hours, the Ukrainian forces, Nazi Ukrainian forces, shelled the Lugansk Republic's territory four times. War crimes by the Poroshenko regime. Guru Andre, this is very important. The use of grad rocket launchers on civilian areas, including the bombing of the Russian office of the JCCC, will be brought up at the next contact group meeting. The delegation of the Donetsk People's Republic will raise the issue of the use of rocket artillery by the Nazi Ukrainian army at the upcoming contact group meeting in Minsk on August 26. DPR Chief Negotiator Denis Pushilin said on Thursday, Nazi Kiev control forces also shelled the area where the Russian office of the Joint Center for Ceasefire Control and Coordination, JCCC, is located. At around 12.30 in the morning, the Russian JCCC observers working in the DPR again came under a artillery fire from the fascist Ukrainian armed forces. A direct shell strike ignited a warehouse near the observation post. The observers were evacuated to a safe place and no injuries were reported. This is the third time in the area close to the JCCC quarters was shelled over the past four days. In the previous two cases, projectiles came from 122 artillery guns. That said, the DPR command decided to distribute 20 sets of personal protective gear, helmets and bulletproof vests to observation posts located close to the contact line. The situation is es escalating. Donetsk News Agency quotes him as saying, We will raise this issue in Minsk. We regularly discuss this, but unfortunately, the situation is only getting worse. Earlier, it became known that the Nazi Ukrainian army opened fire from the Grad multiple rocket launchers to shell Telmanov district in the south of the DPR. Besides, the DPR command has reported on numerous occasions that Kiev amassed troops near the contact line in the Donbass region. A source in the operational command of Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, said 
19 homes had been damaged by artillery fire from the fascist Ukrainian army positions in the vicinity Yasinovate, Dukuchayev, Skorlovka, and in the west of Donetsk. According to verified data, the artillery fire that rained down on the outskirts of Dukuchayevsk and Skorlovka's Nikovsky district and Donetsk's Petrovsky districts damaged 19 homes and a cafe. No injuries were reported, no casualties. Earlier reports said that the Ukrainian junta army hammered the Donetsk Republic with a barrage of 133 artillery shells late on Wednesday and into the small hours of Thursday, knocking out 80 transform stations and damaging a coal mine. Each incident where the Ukrainian junta armed forces use weapons prohibited under the Minsk agreements will be thoroughly investigated by the Russian division of the JCCC. Representatives of the OSCE special monitoring mission will be briefed on the results as well. Guru Andre, this just in. Russian special forces troops killed four militants in St. Petersburg on Wednesday in a counter-terrorism operation, Russian investigating committee said. The militants were on a wanted list of suspected members of a militant group in Russia's volatile North Caucasus region, the committee said in a statement on its website. The police stormed an apartment in a residential house where the militants were hiding. There were no casualties among civilians. Viva Putin as Russian Sukhoi-34 fighter bombers pound U.S.-backed ISIS targets from Iranian airbase killing 150 terrorists. For the second consecutive day, Russian Sukhoi-34 fighter bombers flew out of the Hamadan airbase in Iran and attacked U.S.-backed ISIS targets in northern Syria. Yesterday, strikes marked the first time Russia had flown any planes in the operation from a base other than bases inside Russia and Syria. Russia's defense ministry claimed today's strikes had destroyed two ISIS command posts and killed over 150 U.S.-backed ISIS fighters. There was no way to confirm these figures, though, as with the U.S. air war against ISIS, the figures tend to be inflated at times. Iran's National Security Council says the decision to let Russia share the Hamadan air base was a strategic one and that it was increasing their cooperation against ISIS forces inside Syria. This is the first time Iran has allowed another country to use its territory for military operations since the 1979 revolution. The move allowed Russia considerable savings in fuel and increased utility as the planes coming out of Hamadan were too large to operate out of Russia's smaller airfields inside Syria and would have had to be deployed from inside Russia previously, a much further trip. Viva Putin! Guys, listen to this. What hypocrisy. What hypocrisy as the U.S. regime is claiming that Russia's use of an Iranian airbase is a U.N. violation. The U.S. State Department is claiming that the Russian use of an Iranian airbase for strikes against ISIS in Syria could violate U.N. Security Council Resolution 2231 and claims to be consulting our lawyers to decide if it amounts to a violation. Resolution 2231 bans Iran from attaining nuclear-capable ballistic missiles or combat aircraft, though the State Department claims it can be used to do a lot of other things, and that Russia having military assets inside Iran might amount to a transfer of military technologies to them. Russia officials are pointing out that it's obviously not the case, and that no aircraft or supplies are being transferred to Iran. They're just using the Iranian base. The language of the resolution does not suggest any ban on Iran allowing the use of their air bases. The U.S. opposes Russia's airstrikes in Syria, even though both are targeting ISIS. It is unsurprising then to see the U.S. complain about the matter, though the resolution's mention appears to be grasping at straws, and it clearly requires a broad interpretation of the test language, and it's unlikely anyone else on the Security Council is going to see things America's way. A Russian connection as Trump brings in a defense intelligence advisor and RT analyst at top secret briefing. Donald Trump will bring in Michael Flynn, a former head of the Defense Intelligence Agency. Flynn, a retired lieutenant general and high-profile advisor to Trump, has attracted attention since he was pushed out of government in 2014 for criticism of what he says is the Obama administration's failure to confront radical Islam, his role as an analyst on Russian network RT, and his embrace of Trump. ABC News reported on Tuesday that Flynn, along with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, would accompany Trump to his first top-secret briefing. 
left-leaning critics fears that the Trump camp would gain access to secrets it could potentially leak to contacts in the Kremlin. But former intelligence officials familiar with the briefings process said it's unlikely that the presidential nominees or their advisors will be looped in on critical secrets until after the election in November. It's not unusual for presidential nominees to bring national security aides to classified briefings. The candidates are automatically eligible for briefings after receiving their party's nomination, but aides must first be vetted and granted an expedited security clearance. David Priest, author of the president's Book of Secrets said in a phone interview. Priest, a former CIA analyst and briefer, said he was not aware of any nominees and advisors ever being barred from attending a briefing. A spokesman from the Office of Director of National Intelligence, which oversees the classified meetings, declined to elaborate on the vetting process for the aides who accompany nominees. If the intelligence community isn't alarmed by Flint's post-government connections with Russia and its propaganda outlet, it could be an indication of the limited information that will be provided during the briefing. Hey everybody, that ends our program. Thanks so much again. The support for Nova Russia Rocks radio station, Project Guru. As I stress always, be safe out there, stay on alert, have a great, great weekend, and see you back on Monday. Bye-bye, folks.